What is up, everybody? It's ADB95, and I got KB in the commentary booth with me. Hello, everybody. And welcome to another game of Grand League Summer. We have already seen the first one. We are now with Nate Andrews and Chris. They are actually both usually play in Sky Blue, so Chris decided to take one for the team, and he's playing Green. I forgot again the name of the first map, Dusty Ridge. Uh... And it's pretty, it's pretty interesting lineups we're, we're having, because Nate is bringing the couple, as we usually call it. Um, but he's having Medic first and Grenadier in, in fourth. Can you see the screen, by the way, in a KB? I can indeed, yeah, I can. Then. Okay, okay, okay. Then um, you have two Sapper in the middle and a Gunner in last. And in the meantime, when Nate... Uh, goes back to the other screen, we will see Chris is bringing neither a Medic nor a Grenadier, which is an interesting pick for... And yeah, we're back. Yeah, sorry sorry about that. It's just when you, when you have to deal with new players, it's just... It, it's easy to forget things that you are used to. Anyway, this new league is interesting for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's the biggest league we ever had. Okay, we see the the slippery Interesting one. Interesting start there. Um, yeah. And then again, it, it wouldn't be Hogs of War without some kind of shonky thing going wrong. But uh, we're finally underway. I actually knew about that one. I just never saw it on camera. Yeah, I've seen it in the background of High and Dry once or twice, but never on this map. And we see Nate kicking off with a classic trank uh, on the nearest guy he could find, which was the Sapper. Yeah, an interesting uh, difference of lineups. Um, so we'll have to see if Nate's stronger one is going to win out against Chris's more conventional one. Yeah, it's, it makes sense. Just uh, when you have a medic against neither a medic nor a grenadier, it's just you can tranquilize whoever you want. Yeah, in some ways it can be quite freeing, but in other ways it's sometimes a little hard to prioritize who. But I think going for the sapper since he was there is a sensible thing, especially if you've maybe lost track of turn order or something. Yep, and uh, we see here the anti-P mine collected by Chris. He's a little bit uh, on the back foot with uh, with his turn management, but he probably will be able to both put the mine and do something else. Just enough, I think he has. Oh, okay, not quite no. enough time Ooh. to get shot away, but he does get the crate homing missiles that could come uh, in. That, that was a cool, that was a cool, cool turn there, ending by the jump to just. Get a that little bit of extra movement to collect the crate, which does contain a homing missile. Not the biggest weapon in the game, but... Certainly not for more experienced players, but for grunts it could t prove to be quite handy, actually. You can just pick whoever you want on the other side of the map and uh, let loose. So, yeah, it could be kind of useful in this one. Well, I I'll tell you what, for a weapon that just homes to the pig you aim it at, it's it's got surprisingly more tech than you would assume. Yeah, you have to be very careful with your aim and things so you don't hit objects in the way. Going for the uh, nearest pig, which is uh, ooh, interesting. That is a lot of power probably as well, too much, just fine. enough, okay. Yeah, a little close there. Safe damage so far. He has weapons that could have done more, but he decided to go for the homing missile. That is the fun of Grunt League. You'll see all kinds of strategies that we're not used to at the high level of play. So, yep, a crazy homing missile just for a second turn. And more I'm all up for these collected. unless they make the game last, last 45 minutes. And I know I know you know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Hopefully we'll have a slightly <laughs> higher damage and smoother game than that in this one. But uh, these guys are complete unknowns. So yeah, we'll have to just see how yeah. it plays out. I will say there's probably no risk of that on Dusty Ridge. So we're probably fine. Yeah, should be. They should be able to find each other easy enough and just uh, let loose. Coming a bit of a signature for Chris, laying down an anti-P mine. Does get a shot away at the last second. That's going to be a little bit close. Way too short. That's... Oh, but the the land protects him. Oh, wait, no. Oh, he did get no, not quite. 29 self damage. That's quite a lot. Saw a bit of that in the quick practice round as well. So, uh, yeah, needs to get his eye in with those mortars. Oh, yeah. For, for a second, I, I was worried I for, had forgotten to put the, the resolution to times five, but no, it's fine. <laughs> that was a, a chill down my spine right there. <laughs> Hopefully everything's going to be fine now as we see Nate uh, getting a health crate and getting out his TNT and picking a target. Off to a fairly strong start here. He's already got a trank down and done some half-decent damage. 
Because because I'll tell you what, my biggest problem with mortars when we started to doing competitive is I, I had a setup for a close range mortar, but it was uh, like on the times one resolution with a very specific arrow setup. So once we switched to the highest resolution, I couldn't do it anymore without killing, hitting myself. That's an interesting one. I know a lot of the guys have their own sort of specific setups for close range mortars. I prefer to just kind of go by pure ultra instinct at long range and see what happens. Oh yeah. That's a bit of a long range jetpack as well. We saw, uh, I believe, Nate getting a little bit of, of self damage with a TNT in the previous turn. And it seems like Chris is uh, using his jetpacks in a bit of an unoptimized way, if you ask me. Yeah, certainly. He did get 20 with the first one, which was quite lucky, but now using the second one just to go for the health, which isn't the worst idea. If he can just get a shot away at the last second. I mean, that's the... Target quickly. That's the point of the 45 seconds, is get, to get grunts used to the movement they need to do, and despite that, uh, Chris fails to get the, any damage on that bazooka shot, but here comes the most dangerous pick of, pick of the bunch. Now, it's interesting with these guys being unknowns, do they know about the cluster double tap to get max damage? Uh, I guess we're going to find out very shortly. Ooh, when he finds an interesting 20 crate, which could be crucial on the Grenadier. I mean, the double tap is possibly one of the most known tricks of the game. But yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's, also, know it. it's also possible he doesn't know. I think with that position, it's actually kind of, it's actually possible to shove him completely out of the map. Yeah, it would be at a different angle. This is going to shove him further into the map. That looks like half decent power. Does he know the... Oh, okay. Not necessarily that he doesn't know the tactic, but he did do a late release for just an extra 13. I will say um, a, a good choice to not go for the double tap there. It did look like it was not going to work. Yeah, it was actually. So, yeah, never going to be the best turn there, but at least he got some extra damage away. Now going to see a poison from Chris. Taking a lot of time, I've noticed, Chris, with his turns, but no, he gets one away with a few seconds left. Yeah, just want to get used to the environment. That's going to be oof, just enough with the insane range of the poison gas. Yeah, very close. Looking at the health bars as well, we can see Nate starting to pull out a small advantage. He has had some slightly more solid turns so far and also picked up quite a lot of the health crates too. Oh, yeah. So far, no big super hits, if you want. And uh, also, I think Chris is going to skip his turn now. But uh, both both players seem to struggle a little bit with bazookas. Uh, which is um, is different compared to, for example, the first game we had. With uh, Forbesy and Mamo showing that uh, they can shoot a bazooka out. I mean, they, they might be nerves. a very impressive first game, I thought. I mean, it might be nerves for these two. You can't uh, outright that possibility. Yeah, definitely. Could be nerves, could be a little bit of lag. I guess we'll have to see if they can get their eye in um, over Ooh, time. That's a, that's a very medic. nice crate. Very scary medic there. Uh, he's going to go for the same guy. I mean, it makes sense. He's stuck there. He's got. Uh, he's the fifth guy of his team, so he's not going to move anytime soon. And sensibly going for another trank. I think that's not a bad idea. Just keep this guy locked down in the corner there. Hmm. I think just the raw offensive power that uh, Nate's team has will bring him to victory if this goes on. He, uh, Chris needs to turn this around by playing a little bit smarter. Yeah, he's going to have to get his eye in with the... Um, I keep saying that, but yeah, he's got a lot of you know bazookas and mortars and things at his disposal compared to the clusters of Nate, so he's going to have to get his eye in with them soon so he can start getting some decent damage away. Yep. We say that many times, well, let, let's say it again, the paratrooper is most probably the the one class that sets apart a good player from a veteran player. Yeah, I'd definitely say so. You can at least see the uh, different approaches from grunts versus experienced players in the way that they use jetpacks and things. That was a quite that stylish is, little homing missile there, I like that. That is the most curve I've ever seen uh, a homing missile do. Very swish indeed. Nice to see them being used, actually, because, yeah, they're not the sort of thing you see being used at the higher level, but, yeah, but here they are in grunts. I like that. Oh, yeah, when you think about it, there's a ton of weapons that we would have never seen in competitive. Oh, does that count as a... 
No, it doesn't, because apparently you can walk here. Okay. I had no idea you could do that. That's interesting. Neither did I. I managed just to get the crate as well. Another airburst. Nate looking very, very tanky at the moment. All, all kinds of good things at his disposal. Oh, yeah. He got pretty much all the crates. Both health and weapons. Yep, I'm going for a nice standard TNT there for a clean 50 damage. That scout just avoided the slipping. It's basically the only thing that's keeping Chris holding to this game right now. Pretty much, yeah. He's going to have to pull out something special soon. Who's he going to go for? This seems to be another classic grunt staple. Go for a little walk while you uh, work out exactly what your target's going to be. Ooh. Ooh. And a little slip. Two little slips. No, okay. <laughs> Standing quite close to his own scout there, which is a little bit dangerous. Nate might be able to capitalize on that, but what's he going to do Maybe he wants to pair the two 97s there. Oh, yes, indeed. Maybe. Now, this looks like a pretty decent shot. This yep. should be... Seems like he yeah, just 43. needed to calibrate. Yeah. Very nice indeed. Anything over 40 is a decent shot, I'd say. So, yeah, not bad there from Chris. The bar, the bar says Nate is in a slight advantage, but the bar doesn't count the last turn, so it might be just tied. Yeah, Chris may be starting to get into his stride a little now. Nate struggling to find a target here. He's going for quite a long walk. And with a he's trying to find the scout, class. maybe. Possibly, yeah. Okay, he's got the two guys over here now. Ooh, taking a walk over to the right. Yep. Ah, here we go. That's a mistake you don't want to do when there's sappers around you. Definitely going to see some big double damage here. I like this. Yeah, it's a double 35-ish. So I guess it's going to be pretty good. It would be amazing gonna... if he could just deal the same amount of damage to both so they stay at the same amount of health. Yeah, that'd be kind of funny. I guess we'll get the moment of truth soon. But uh, yeah, still decent damage there. Very, very nice. Well, remember, Chris has a scout in his team, and that can make a difference in a late game. Yeah, definitely. Even if you can't make use of the poison strats, you've still got solid 40 damage with the sniper rifle every turn. So yeah, never ever leave those scouts alive too long. That's good advice for any grunts watching this. To be fair, one of the poisons is in is in play now, and I think that guy is just in range for skipping after this shot. So he would either need to not hit him completely or just do it with someone else. Looks like he's Looks opting like for the sapper latter, instead. Yeah. 38. Nice shot there. Did I hear some self-damage on the other guy? I'm not 100% sure. Oh, but this guy is still 140 yeah, a little far out of the action. He needs to take a bit of a stroll to get involved. But yeah, big, beefy grenadier there. And there's also that medic. With um, full health too. So, Nate is really in the advantage right now. He definitely is. Taking the little sneaky path again. I love that he's now, it's now his, his area. Oh, wait. Okay. Ooh. I always get just... scared when grunts do this. They, they just... You know, there's always a possibility that I don't know the rules. It, it would be pretty bad to just have to interrupt the game to just tell, Hey, that thing you just did, you can't do it. <laughs> yeah, speaking of which, it's probably worth explaining that one of the rules in um, Hogs that we have is that uh, you can't exploit glitches in the map, like wall climbing. So on certain maps, if you run alongside the invisible wall at the edge of the map, you can jump over a, a terrain that would normally be slippery. And that's not something we allow. So hopefully the players are aware of that and... Uh, yeah, we don't see any sneaky, sneaky tactics taking place, but yep. Yeah, yeah but because, because that basically breaks most of the maps, so. Ooh! Ooh. So that close. was crucial there. Yeah, that could have uh, turned things around in the late game if he got even more pigs poisoned, but no, just a little far out of range. I like the fact that he was trying to keep his own guys safe, but in the end, yeah, a bit of a dud. Yeah, it was not an easy shot for sure. And it would have been easy for me to learn about Nate's preparation about poison pigs. Because that guy was on 30. Would have taken a turn on 5. So, so we Chris see another long turn. bazooka. Yeah. And slow but steady, Nate seems to be controlling the game. Which, uh, you know, stronger lineup got, went first. The enemy just didn't have... Wait. Oh. Oh, okay. okay. He's fine. <laughs> I thought my internet crashed. 
you're already lost connection or something, but no, just taking a little time to think, and yeah, sensibly using up that last uh, trank, I guess, in this corner. Oh, yeah, maybe was thinking whether to just stay there or move away, which would have been a pretty, very pro move, to be honest. Right, just opts to keep himself safe in the corner. And what can yeah, I guess do you don't, re don't really need to plan that much. The enemy's pigs are all... Um, pretty low on health, and I have to say, pretty good the fact that he ch didn't kill anyone. He just damaged everyone, but with no kills, because he it kept the, the orders, the turn order, straight for his med medic to keep dealing with that guy. Yeah, it's worked out nicely. He's, um, yeah, it's good to see the damage being spread rather than just concentrating on one guy. I think Chris is going for some double damage here, but I'm not sure how well this is going to work. Let's see... Well, that Ooh. somehow did 25 to him. I'm not sure if it hit the guy up on the ridge either, but... Um, no, it yeah. didn't. I was confused by this turn. Why wouldn't you not... Why would you not go for the guy up there? Or go for this sapper, because it's interesting with the homing missile, because you can land it so precisely. You could have put it just next to this sapper, dealt maybe around 35 damage, and then got him to skip this next turn, but I guess uh, Chris... Just not thinking of that tactic, but yeah, it could have been really Or nice. maybe just hit the Grenadier, which is still sitting at 140. Yeah, indeed. Or prioritize the most dangerous guy here you can possibly <laughs> Probably, think Probably, yeah. The good thing about the Grenadier is there's only one per match. One per best of three, so Chris won't have to deal with... It. Oh, wow. That oh, is move. pretty good. That is a pretty good yeah. move. Not bad at all. It's a nice bunching up. Hmm. And there's a chance he might might get a um, might get to his pig to move out and hit them both. I'm not sure about the turn order, but it could be a possibility. Yeah, I've lost track a little bit. If he can get his other pig out there, that'll be an opportunity for some really beefy damage. So yeah, nicely done. Some good tactical thinking here from Nate, I'd say. Oh yeah. So that could be a little bit over, but 25 is more than enough for. Oh, no, actually, that was Chris playing. In that case, no, it's not enough. <laughs> nope. Seen big help And that's it. Now. That's a clean TNT for it. Oh, I don't even need a TNT. They're both below 15 any or anything. You wouldn't notice if you weren't uh, paying attention, but the scout definitely played the animation of being lower than 20. And I think he was also crouching down, which means lower than 10. So, yeah, I think he was. Oh, but he self killed! Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, he did look a little bit close um, on the escape. But even so, a nice little double kill there. I like that. Double and a half. <laughs> yes. Double murder suicide. But um, yeah, not bad at all. And obviously, being grunts are always going to pick the um, explosive weapon. So yeah, nice to see him go out with a bang with a big old. And TNT. I think, believe it or not, that was the first. These were the first kills of the game. Yes, actually, it's been going on a while, and yeah, that's um, the first two guys down. I think you're right. Now, Chris, going for whatever oh. reason for the grenade launcher. <laughs> the grunts do love the grenade launcher, don't they? All those options, and they go for the grenade launcher. Yeah, this is something I one. cannot explain for the life of me. Like, for Ooh. for the some reason, the. the, the the hardest class to figure out for those who don't play competitive hogs is the Grenadier. Like, why would you not use the most powerful weapon? It's just, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's the fact that they weren't used to play as them as a kid, which is... Well, I was going to... I was going to say it's possibly because those weapons don't really appear in the campaign all that much, so maybe they're used to the standard ones. But I was just going to say, this is a nice move there from Chris, because he used the machine gun sensibly to get that guy down into poison skip range. So unless Nate can deal with that, that is going to be a skip. Might be a little bit too late, but... Nate is not precise either with his bazookas, so... Yeah, definitely he could have a gone emerging. A, if he could have gotten a little, a, a bit, one more poison in, maybe there would have been a chance to, to counter. Because remember, the the guy that uh, locked down from the start of the game for Chris is a sapper. And yeah, maybe they don't use, these guys don't use shrapnels, but still. Well, oh, more self damage. 
The camera is just straight up bullying these two, because whenever there's a self-hit, it just goes crazy. Gonna be no opportunity for Nate to heal here, as Medic is way too far away, unless he takes a very long run. So I guess well, he's just gonna go for damage on this sapper. Yeah, when you have an air burst on your Medic, I don't think I would complain. <laughs> yep, you gotta to use it. Noticing Whoever... from Chris, he's having a little trouble sort of prioritizing the um, stronger pigs. So not only did he get self damage, but he was only going for the gunner when he had a grenadier right in the vicinity. So yeah, something to learn there. Nice 48 though. Yeah, so far, the pattern of grunts we have, we've been getting is people that know how to play the game, like they have good technical te technical knowledge on how to use the weapon, but just lack the tactical experience. I, I struggle with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Easy enough. Oh, and there's a skip. Nicely done. But, um... I have to say, with these two, it seems like it's... Uh, they have a, a, a bit more trouble with heavy weapons than I'm used to see, even in Grunt League. Yeah, that is a fair point. Normally, uh, bazookas are one of the more reliable weapons, but here, proving to be a little bit elusive. What can Chris do with his airburst here? Are we going to see a goodie? That's Ooh, way it's gonna too be very much. long. Oh, Ooh. wait. That works out okay in the end. Not bad. I didn't notice he had uh, aimed down, but that was a good shot. Yeah, managed to detonate at just the right time. Oh, but look at this grenadier. He's still so healthy. Oh, and the grenade and launcher again. Yeah, he's taunting the enemy with just not using his most powerful weapon. I guess he just saw the first cluster and just said, fuck it. Yeah, maybe he really isn't used to how the clusters yeah. work. Gets a 30 at least, but um, yeah. Destroys the tree. And you can see the gunner here, which, to be honest, has dealt more damage to him, probably, than to the others. In this yeah, game. I think he has. He's been his own worst enemy so far. <laughs> so, right. it's gonna be hard to keep that two there for Johns. Ooh, too much power again. I think Chris is trying to aim down to compensate for the distance, but he's not really altering the power either, so we're just seeing constant overshots and undershots. Yep, I had a feeling it was gonna go for the grenade launcher. <laughs> to be fair, ri oh, Rifle dear. Burst is a pretty hard weapon to use. Yeah, it's not everyone's favorite. Particularly inexperienced players don't tend to favor that weapon, so I can kind of understand this one. Yep. Although, mathematically, you would have to go for the Rifle Burst, because what's the worst that can happen? You can just get a 15 and you can just kill him in the next turn anyway. Yeah, or get a 45 and take him out, but no, just gets a 20 in the end. Finally, the Sapper gets to do... Oh no, he has moved before, actually. He's only got two TNTs left, but yeah, gonna get some damage away at last. Wait, did he? I completely I I missed it. How does he have two TNTs? I'm not sure. I, I could be going slightly blind or having some kind of minor aneurysm, but I believe also I saw two TNTs, <laughs> so maybe he's had a turn. <laughs> don't, don't need to get an aneurysm over hogs. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I, I think I actually did during my uh, Grunt League experience. That, or at the very uh, least, wait for the meeting. Yeah, <laughs> which I'm very much looking forward to. Nice to be commentating and not having the pressure of playing, I must say. It's nice to just watch a couple of newbies oh, test man, out their skills. Oh, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Nice clean rifle shot there just to take out the uh, poorly gunner. Chris yeah, really not a, with any options left. There's like a jungle of boots in here. Yeah, one of those games where it's all gathered up in one corner. But you know, decided to take a walk. Who knows, he keeps overshooting the bazookas. So maybe a long range one will serve him better. Who knows? Can you believe it? The the last two guys of Nate Andrews' team is the Medic and the Grenadier. Yeah, the two highest priority pigs have survived the longest. I don't think I've ever seen that. I'm sure it's happened once or twice, but I can't really remember the games now. Let's see what the homing missile does. To be fair, to that's a tree in the middle. Oh, the tree! <laughs> oh, dearie me. I, I, I don't mean to be rude, but that looked like he purposely aimed for the tree and not getting any damage. <laughs> Because <laughs> this I'm was the just the perfect angle. <laughs> it was absolutely the perfect angle. That, that was quite an amusing tell. I'm sure he was thinking that was going to be a clean amount of damage and just didn't account for the tree. But yeah, quite an amusing one that. But it happened. It's it also possible soft, that they uh, that he just doesn't know the direct line rule. You know, because it's it's a pretty hard thing to understand in hogs. Like if you, if you haven't 
had an epiphany where you have a turn where, just like that one, for example, where you go like, how did it not do damage? And then you figure it, oh, because it needs to have a straight line be between the explosion and the pig. Indeed, anything in the way will uh, just absorb it all, as it did there with the uh, tree in the uh, turn before last. I mean, that's how ha that's how I understood it. That's how it happened to me, so. Yeah. Seeing Chris hobbling along now with his poorly sapper, trying to pick someone to blast that, but it's going to have to be oh, more grenade launchers. Yeah, I was going to say, if Nate refuses to use anything other than grenade launchers with the uh, grenadier, this might not be over at all, but it just, just I just look at the health and... The fact that this grenadier could, could finish the game with more health than he started with... Now, that really would be the first time that that's happened. I am 100% sure. Like, without even checking all the matches, that would be the first time. Yep, complete first time. But I like the fact that Nate is getting involved and not just relying on long-range grenade launchers. That can happen occasionally, and I'm hoping we're not going to get that and we'll just get a nice clean finish. Although, he does use the grenade launcher yet again. At least it's not the rifle. Oh, is that going to be enough? Oh, oh, no! no. Yeah, you might wanna you wanna wanna try the high high explosive grenade. I'm at the very least, if you're worried about lag or anything, that is the one to go for. Now, how's this gonna be? Full power at flat Looks angle good. could be a nice yeah. shot. Yeah, very nice. Iron Fox would be proud. Uh, so now, guess guy is on twenty four. Can't heal anyone. I mean, the grenadier is over his normal health. so... <laughs> That wouldn't work. Yeah, it wouldn't work even if you could get over there. More grenade launcher madness to finish this off. Actually, I've never tested this. If you heal a guy that has more than his health, does the game glitch out and just puts him back? Put the would it put back to to 120? I believe it just does the failed healing sound and nothing happens. Oh yeah, that one. Guys, I, I remember something like that. I'm not sure. I, actually, if this guy hits a super shrapnel, <laughs> this could you be still know. open. It's possible, I suppose. Let's see what he can do. He needs to get just the right power and just the right angle. Don't know if he's been watching previous games and studied at all. It looks like he does. Uh, okay, no. Ah, <laughs> oh, never mind. Just a bit too much. All right, just hit him in the face. Do anything. anything. Just punch him. Yep, that'll do fine. Just do more than 22 damage. Just give him a headbutt. Just need to tap it. Doesn't even need to go far. That looks quite long. It's very long. Nope. Oh, dear. <laughs> okay. Looks like a clean kill here. And again, like I said before, if Nate doesn't get ho over his fear of using anything other than the grenade launcher for the grenadier, this might not be over. Yeah, we could see some kind of crazy upset, possibly, if um, Chris can get lucky with another shrapnel. That's going to be another very interesting long shot. Oh, Ooh, but that's on two health. Quite enough. Why would you not use the cattle prod? You even grabbed it. <laughs> he grabbed it, ran up to him, changed his mind, and did less than the cattle prod would have done. Oh. Classic grunt action there. Absolutely yep. classic. This is the most grunt game probably we're we're having this year, and what is he? What is Nate doing? Oh, just going for a. What oh. was that? Oh, oh, oh. That was genius tactics, is what it was. That was that was impressive. Seven million IQ move. <laughs> that was honestly impressive because I've never seen two pigs so close to each other. Not like one is is hit by the ground here, and one the yeah, it isn't. <laughs> Yeah, it was actually fascinating. I think he was probably trying to go for a guaranteed like, and suicide that's a kill just to do damage. Yeah, I think the sapper is not far away enough. Oh, I didn't hear anything. I think maybe he's got away with it. He has. Hmm. Interesting. I was hoping for a shrapnel, though, for some kind of crazy upset comeback, but no, just went for the TNT in the end. Uh, and this guy is now down to... 50-something? 53. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, if he, if he fails again, there's a possibility. Okay, Ooh. no. He, he did. Look for a second like it might not have worked out, but yeah, just enough in the end. 
So it's a paratrooper against a, a grenadier, unless something crazy happens with this medic. Uh, getting closer is probably not the best idea. Nope, just and... needs to finish it nice and clean. Yep, yep doing that'll it. Do. That'll do. And now Chris has probably a not more, not less than a couple of turns to kill this paratrooper, which was on 19 health, something like that. Yeah, certainly not an awful lot, but Nate's got a bit of a walk, and this isn't the easiest map to get around if you don't know your way around it, so... That is true. He might not be able to make it there in time, unless he can... Okay, it looks like he might be able to do a long shot from here, hopefully with something other than the grenade launcher, but I fear we may be... Uh, I don't know about action. that. The grenade launcher shot is harder from down here, so... Yeah, I'm hoping he'll go for something else, but no, just actually deciding to get up close and personal, taking a very long walk around the edge of the map. I am now actually... I am now actively thinking this is not over. <laughs> yeah, I'm beginning to think so too. This could be... Oh, who knows? It's okay, okay, tense. okay, okay. If he goes for the rifle, which he doesn't... Just... Oh, he doesn't go for the rifle. Okay, that's, that's fine, off. that's fine, that's fine. Yep, there we go, there's a kill. Whew, there's that a could kill. have been Whew. a crazy comeback for Chris there. Yep. True, but uh, Nate Andrews takes the first game. Wow, um... What can I say? Like, there's a, there's a ton of good stuff and a ton of stuff they probably could improve on. But, you know, that's Grunt League, so no complaints here. Have anything yeah, else to I say, KB? Yeah, I would say that was just a good old classic round of grunts. Some unconventional strategies, but I'd, I will say this. At least they were kind of decisive with their turns and didn't sort of scratch their heads a lot of the time. You know, at least it was kind of fairly quick paced, even if it took a little while. So, yeah, not a bad one. Yeah, yeah, of course. I don't want to come out, come off as an asshole when when I say that there's stuff to improve. Like I, I it's like you said, oh, no, it's no. just also nice to see just two piggies just throwing punch, punches at each other, like it, there's no tomorrow. Certainly, yeah, lots to learn, but um, you know they'll get there and an entertaining game nonetheless. As we move on to the next map, and yeah, we're gonna move off to Skullduggery. Nice. And we're back. We're about to go on a trip to Skullduggery, one of the. How do you, how do you explain Skullduggery, really? Um, lots of drowning. <laughs> um, lots of drama. Hideous, <laughs> absolute potential for damage. It's one of those completely crazy sort of maps. And I like Nate's lineup here with two paratroopers. Big potential for manipulating pigs, getting them closer to the water, and then blasting them in there. Uh, but yeah, Chris, stuff. on the other hand, is bringing the couple, again in a very unconventional position. Yeah, not sh quite sure what the thinking is there, but um, he has indeed got them at his disposal. So yeah, this might come down to lineups again. It's going to either be lineups or who can make best use of the water. So yeah, all to play for here. Well, Chris will also go first because, you know, the rule is that uh, the first, one, first game is random, then the second one has to be the opposite. And if we go to a third game, that's random again. And, of course, the game doesn't help us, so we have to restart. There we go. And now, just have to wait. Okay, welcome back, AB. Finally, we've got a clean start. Wouldn't be uh, hogs without all kinds of silly shenanigans. Mm. I just told the guys that our record was, like, seven restarts for getting the second player, the second game right. And uh, I feared for a second that we were going to break the record because I, I said that. Yeah, I think that was four in the end. Could have been a lot worse. But yeah, yeah, finally underway. And now Chris is on the back foot here. He has to come back from the first game. He has the strongest lineup. He is going first. He's again firing the jetpacks from a little too far away. Yeah, this is an unusual one. Normally we see jetpacks being used um, in the busy guy style, which is sort of straight up and down, but uh, this time we're seeing them launched from quite far away. Nice 37 though with the bazooka, maybe yep. finally starting to get a feel for it. Good start. He did aim up, so it it does feel like he, he, he does better when he aims it either up or down. And uh, yeah, Nate is finding himself in a bit of a pickle here with the positioning. Yeah, very isolated, but he has got the best pig to deal with it because he can fly over with a jetpack and uh, save his skin, although he will lose the opportunity to do damage with it unless he can land Ooh, this he's perfectly. He's aiming for the Grenadier. That's a good choice. But that's probably going to burn everything in his turn. 
probably will do. He might just have time for something. And also, going for the Grenadier over here is good because he needs to prioritise him, but he will now be alone on this island with him. So, yeah, he's not going to last long, I don't think. Yeah, might have time to do something. Not anymore. Nope. Not going to happen. Trying to pick a weapon, but just couldn't quite make his mind up. Yeah. These two guys are playing uh, with the same amount of lag, approximately, so it's a fair fight. But, uh, yeah, it's always a little know. painful to see one player struggling with lag, but yeah, at least in this case it's even Stevens. Yeah, no, my point was, it's already something to be a grunt, you know, with experience and everything, you also have to cope with the, with the lag. It's the first ever competitive game for both of these two, so just, let's just say that out loud, because that's, a, that's an important detail. It is indeed. Seeing Nate going for another long off. Whoa! Very close to the airship there, but just gets away with it. Nearly booped him on the nose. Could have let it. Could have waited a little bit more, but maybe, maybe again was afraid of the of the blimp. That is actually going to cut him time. Cut time for him. <laughs> more high IQ moves there. That's uh, not such a bad shout. Okay, is this bazooka going to work? There's out? one it's thing I love very about. Accurate. Uh, about Grunt League is un unaccurately genius moves. Like, yeah, unintentionally genius know. moves. But then, like Axby says, when you don't know, you have to assume that it's intentional. So, we're gonna do that. Yeah, always give the benefit of the doubt. So, are we gonna see... Yeah, okay. Chris now going for the more varied and powerful options for his Grenadier. Not just gonna rely on the grenade launcher, not at this stage at least. And aiming slightly to the left to try and knock this power into the water. So it could be good, although it's very long. That Ooh, is a bad. very good shot, although too good. Because it doesn't get uh, a lot of water damage. It's like it's kind of like in football when they say you hit the ball too well. Did they, do they say that in English? Uh, yeah, I don't know anything about football, unfortunately. Cool, but I'm okay. Assume uh, that people say <laughs> Tell me in the comments, then. Yeah, comment down below and let us know if that's a saying in football. I couldn't possibly say, unfortunately. More grenade launcher action. That's what we but like yeah, to see to just to, for a clean just 17. To give a stupid explanation. It's just uh, when you hit the, the ball very well with your foot, but but it's too you hit it too well so it doesn't angle and it just you just pass it to the keeper, basically. Because it's I too see. much to the center. Yeah, there was a little bit of that with our high explosive grenade because the pig span around straight for the land in front of him and didn't get much extra water damage, but not bad. Well, cool. Can that we means see... the metaphor worked. It did indeed. <laughs> As we see a trank coming out for Chris on the spy, who I believe goes now. He does indeed. So that's an instant skip. A little bit troublesome with the positioning, but it depends on what Chris does with them. Yeah, speaking of which, who's he going to go for now? The sniper not able to really make use of water damage much, but yeah, a clean 40 with a sniper rifle. And maybe a little extra water damage here is uh, not a bad idea, although he will be vulnerable. That won't be much. Yeah, the, the sniper rifle is never reliable for... just It just doesn't have enough knockback to do to produce any amount of significant water damage. I would have gone for the grenade launcher, uh, ironically. <laughs> <laughs> Strangely enough, it might actually have been a better option for once. But what's Nate going to do here? Because he does have two green targets here, but he does have his own spy too. So are we going to see some crazy kamikaze type move? Or In my opinion, hitting two for one is always a good idea. Yeah, it's not a bad shout. This, with some water damage, could be a very nice move, actually. Let's because see. mathematically, Let's it's away. just like you if you were hitting just one of the enemy, right? right? And plus, yeah, there's of... the, the medic in the, in the mix, so... Yeah, that's true. Prioritize the right pig. And yeah, if you think of Hogs as a game of just pure maths almost, then yeah, double damage on two opponents and one of your own. It kind of cancels out. So yeah, not the worst move. Just a nine More here. More crazy jetpacks. Ooh, there's a lot of pigs in quite close positions, but not completely close. So just safe. That was a very a much nicer jetpack from uh, Chris here. I... I have to stop myself from calling him Forbesy because I have the, the other game in mind, which I just watched today back on YouTube. <laughs> and he also played green. <laughs> yeah, they're both playing in green as well. I have to say, Chris's jetpacks are very unconventional, but he is getting half decent damage with them every time. And Ooh, that's a that's really a nice perfect bazooka, bazooka hit. Chucky damage. is dead. Yeah, no coming back from that. That was a lovely turn. Ooh. Ah. Yeah. That is. Still very nicely done. 
that is most likely the biggest amount of damage we have seen in this match because that was uh, I think 110 around paratrooper died in one in one turn. Yeah, perfect turn that. Really nicely done with a 40 bazooka as well. So yeah, Chris may be starting to come into his stride a little. Although this isn't a bad idea with the um, cattle prod, you can get him right yep, into this the middle is a, of this big body of water. This is a genius idea. This is why I don't didn't really like the the choice of the sniper rifle before either. Because uh, this is going to do a ton of damage. You should never position yourself in water, especially in Skullduggery, where pretty much every part where there's water is a huge is a huge body of water. Yeah, definitely. That was a yeah nice use of the uh, cattle prod there. You can see a flamethrower at last. There's another favoured uh, weapon of the Grunts. Could potentially get a double 30 in the right position, but I think uh, that's instead... just in range for both, but he's going to go for the damage on this guy. And it would be huge if it works, which I think it will. Yeah, this is going to be a really Ooh. nice turn. Look at that. Yeah, that guy was on 130, and he almost lost three digits of HP. Good stuff. Yeah, Chris starting to uh, really turn on the taps, doing some really nice damage. Nate isn't doing bad, but with these two turns where Chris dealt basically 200 damage, it's just uh, the, the, the lineup difference is starting to get too much for Nate. It is, and he's not making much use of the poison either, which is really going to be a saving grace with the uh, sniper if he can start to whittle away some of the pig's health. But what's he going to go for? Yep, sniper rifle, I thought so. Seems like poison meta is not in the mind of these two players yet. Not yet. Something you definitely have to make uh, use of if you want to pull out an advantage. But no, just going for the nice... I'll tell you thing. what, though. Uh, Nate will be inspired by this Grenadier. <laughs> yeah, hopefully he'll now realize the... Okay, never oh! mind. <laughs> I'm sorry I jinxed way. that. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> not going to get inspired by that, for sure. Yeah, definitely don't. If you're watching this back, Nate, don't do not do that. That's not what you do with the... Uh, if you're Grenadier. watching this back, don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> don't kill me, Chris. Is this going to be a kill on the medical loss track of his health? It is yep. indeed. Nicely done. So... Oh, yeah, look at the bar. Oh, yeah, big difference. Yeah. Very hard to see how Nate can pull this one back. That paratroop is very low, too. I think this is going to be a clean kill. Maybe a is this going to be the the the, the quickest skullduggery ever? No, there was it feels one like, that it lasted. Feels like it was two minutes. Now, there was one that was ridiculously short. I can't remember who played now, but this is definitely not going to be the shortest. I don't think. Possibly Candyman or someone. I can't remember, but we've had some insanely short ones. This is going to be a little longer. I feel. I don't remember if it was skullduggery though. I'm going to have to check back. Again, if anyone remembers from previous games, comment, because I'm really curious now. I'm sure there was one that was literally only a couple of I'm minutes I'm pretty sure the, first, the, fastest gate, the fastest map was one-way system, and the fastest match involved uh, Ridgeback and the lake. Yeah, with those two maps, I'm not surprised. I miss the lake. I don't. <laughs> I thought you might say that. As we uh, see Nate getting over with his sapper, picking a target. Sniper's not such a bad idea. He could get him down into the water with a good angle. That looks fairly promising. One might say this is this is not a, a, a fantastic map either, but I don't know. It, it it's complete chaos. It feels kind of balanced. I mean, there is some spawn problems, which we can't ever fix because, well... We have pretty much covered all the possible ground there is for spawns in this map. There's just no possible solutions. Yeah, I mean, apart from possible spawn issues, this map's crazy, but I'd say it's at least fair, unlike things like the lake, where you can get silly out-of-bounds kills and there's almost nowhere to stand. Like, this is at least fairly more balanced and it's not so glitchy as the others. So, yeah, still a decent one, I'd say. I like this map. Yeah, I mean, anyway. lake got to the, point, the lake got to the point where there was zero land to be safely standing on. Another lovely Iron Fox style bazooka there from Chris. And He's that might really be extra damage to... there. Nope. Okay. Not quite. And there's a skip too. Look at this. Beautiful stuff from Chris. Yep. And Chris is just taking this to game three. We're taking it to Railroad. Now that's another new map that I quite enjoy as well. Good little set of maps this, I'd say. Oof. I just hope that they don't... You know... 
uh, walk up, step on mines like a couple of people did. Oh yeah, easily done on railroad. How's this going to be? I think Chris is starting to make some very nice use of these flat angle shots now. I think he's sort of found something that's working for him. Yep. Feels good to go, and Nate is going to have to play at his best to take this win home. But so far, it looks like there's absolutely no chance for him to take this 2-0. Pretty much no. I mean, there's a beautiful opportunity for a double poison here. I'm sure uh, some of the viewers will be shouting at the screen, but uh, I'm not sure we're going to see it. Uh, to be honest, I think in this situation, putting, uh, getting a double would mean putting yourself in a very dangerous position, so... It would, yeah, just... although with grunts, I never like to make too many strong predictions because you just don't know how things are going to turn out, but uh, that is yeah, it a would fair still point. have been dicey. And it's a fair point, but it looks like we're just carrying on, so... I have to say, I quite like this... the fact that Chris is using the high explosive grenades rather than the clusters, because it's just such a more reliable weapon if you're uh, not used to the uh, sort of slightly odd mechanics of the clusters. So yeah, just plugging away with some nice, solid damage. So yeah, this is the point where we would usually resort to, to small talk. Just waiting for the next game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is going to be approaching very soon, I feel. If Nate can't get this sniper into a safer spot, then I think Chris is going to, yep, just make more use of that big water damage. I like the fact that he's... Grenade launcher! Trying to body block, I guess. Or maybe not, he's just trying to do this thing again. But I think that was either a missed input or just he gave up. Yeah, I, I can't quite work out what the thinking is there. He might just be going for some kind of like suicide attempt, but he doesn't know how to aim up and down. But uh, yeah, not really sure what that's about. Oh, now this is going to be tricky. Yeah, it is. But that looks pretty decent. Yeah. Nicely done. So Nate is one hit away from losing and smartly decides <laughs> to... <laughs> <laughs> just says. Uh, don't think Chris says, has any jetpacks left with this guy. That's it for me. Does he have a jetpack left? No, I'm not sure. Okay. No, he doesn't. Well, that hopefully means that Dan cannot finish out. the game. No, hopefully it won't be too drawn out beyond this point. If uh, you never know, Den might miss this one. Nope, doesn't. It does get a little bit of damage away. Okay, so next turn it's exactly pretty to much twenty. Be over, so that means even if he does. Uh, Hide again, a perfect 40 would just, would just kill him. Yep, so should hopefully be over soon. So, pretty textbook. Um, in all possible senses of the word. Best of three so far. Because, well, uh, in either case of the first two maps, uh, one player had the strongest lineup, he did go first, there was... Almost no no challenge at all for the winning winning team. But now it's going to be uh, one medic per side. And uh, the map Railroad is quite tricky. So I'm interested to see how this goes. And yeah, we'll see you guys on map 3 in a minute. Alright, we are back after some... Extremely weird, um, what's it called, technical difficulties, but we are now ready to find out who wins the game between Nate Andrews and Chris. The guys are eager to go, they even, didn't even let us read the lineups, who can blame them? Clearly thirsty for blood and just want to get straight on with it. Had a little chat with them, neither of them know the map all that well, so it's just going to be a matter of taking it one turn at a time and seeing who can do the most damage. Uh, that was very nice, like, very, uh, news anchor tone of voice. <laughs> it's almost like I've commentated before. <laughs> oh no, the voices again, God damn it! One second. Uh... Alright, they figured out themselves. Or maybe KB has just told them and I didn't uh, think, it out, think about it. But uh, we saw Nate going first and going with a Tranquilizer, but not on the Medic, which is interesting. 
Yeah, just going for the guy nearest as we see Chris getting a health crate and going for these crates, which I, if I remember rightly, are quite nice. Yeah, TNT and possibly some mines under there. You see that skip going down with the jump? I did indeed. More pro moves. And this is a very, very scary paratrooper now. Look at that arsenal. Yep. However, again, not going for the most dangerous pig, really. Yep, just going for the guy nearest. I quite like the fact that he did go straight for a TNT. He might have been tempted by a jetpack, but then he probably would have lost his turn. But no, it just goes for some decent damage. You could have gone for a mine, for a mine too. But the, the problem with the paratrooper, there's not really any. We he doesn't have any weapon that that has zero knockback. So you would have to just hit someone else if you used for the if you used the mine. Yes, that is true, actually. So, yeah, not a bad turn in the end. We've seen Nate exploring the building to see what we can get. Some nice stuff in here. Well, a rifle burst, which he already has, so never mind. It feels like the boot uh... camp, that, that, that one moment where the general's like, the, the, the major's like, yeah, just go explore the building, see if you can find something in it. Yeah, there's a lovely, juicy health crate right in front of you there. And <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I gonna... didn't know the exact words. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember the exact ones either. It's been a while since I've done boot camp. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know the Italian one either. I don't remember the Italians one, the Italian one e ones either. Nice to see Nate making some use of poison at last. So yeah, we have a couple tactic tactical turns going on in the meantime. Nate has again tranquilized, not the other medics. So Chris is going to have a chance to cancel that trank. On the other hand, though. Nate is also laying down some poisons, which means the medic is going to have more than one target. I'm seeing Chris going for some bunching up here, which I quite like. He just doesn't want to overcook it. That looks like it's going to be pretty decent, I'd say. Also, one thing that I, we didn't mention at all is just uh, Nate un Nate is very unconventional lineup. Medic, scout, and three gunners. Oh yeah, I didn't even get time to look at the lineup because they moved through so quickly. That is very unconventional. Oh, and the bunching up doesn't matter in the end because the gunner gets to move now. But I like the thinking of Chris there. You know, it was at least, uh, you know, some good little tactical ideas. Hmm. I think the medic of the green team is coming up, which means that it's going to be probably a crucial turn for Chris. Indeed, he's going to have to remember to heal either the tranquilized guy or the poisoned sapper right here that CV remembers to do either. Oh, well, he's right there. Oh, he's remembering. He's got healing hands out. Yes, there we go. Nicely done. Now, will he trank the medic back? Yep, he absolutely will. That was the most e the, the easiest turn a medic could have gone there. It, it was just... Uh, he was just right there. Everything was set on the table. He just needed to eat. Yeah, absolutely perfect. Did exactly what he needed to do. Heal his own tranquilized guy and then tranquilize the guy who tranquilizes. So, yeah, good stuff. I like it. However, like we said, um, I think Chris doesn't have scouts. While Meanwhile, Nate does have one. So, if Nate can get use, can, can make use of the, well, the poisons. Yeah, we'll have to see. The out. heavy weapons aren't working for him when he's got such a heavy weapons base lineup. So, uh... Yeah, that might come back to bite him if he can't uh, start getting some more smooth bazookas away. He did hit a couple of those, so a couple of them so far. That was the first one he missed, but yeah, he has to be consistent. Definitely, consistency is the key. We see Chris going for another Iron Fox style low shot. This could be overcooked, but no, not bad at no, all. No. He uh, seems to have found his own dimension with these. Indeed, I thought he was going to go for full power and it might just miss, but no, nope, the right amount of power and a decent amount of damage. It's ironic for me to say since you played against Dimension on this map. Oh yeah, now that was a fascinating game. I really didn't expect some of his crazy tactics that very nearly uh, gave him a victory in the end, actually. He was a good player, Dimension. I'm trying to think here, because Den is loaded with weapons. So, ooh, that's a way ooh. too far. Yeah. Yeah, so far Chris seems to have the upper hand. Watch out for that area there. Yeah, hopefully he's looking at the minimap and he can see there's a cheeky little minefield there. In fact, he might even try and make use of it here if he can blast the gunner into it. That'd be good. That looks like a good direction to me. And that gunner is on 90, which means if he touches a mine, he's dead. 
Oh, this could be a kill here. Let's see if he can do it. Might just be enough distance. 50 and slide. that is not a kill. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought you might just go far enough to slide into it, but nope, not quite. The potential was huge, though, and again, you can see Chris thinking about this sort of thing. He spotted a minefield and tried to make use of it. That was a sad trumpet moment. It was a little bit, yeah, as we see <laughs> the really scary paratrooper coming in, and now this could be the one. Just enough power with this mine, and this could be a this really This is 100% nice a kill. That's a 20, and that means... Another 20 is enough to, to insta-kill, which doesn't really make much of a difference. It probably would have dealt 20 anyway, but, you know, the, the, the insta-kill rule works like that. If uh, a pick touches a mine when it, where, uh, with an amount of health that is half or less what he started the turn with, he instantly dies. Yeah, let's hope that mine doesn't overcook it. I think it should be just the right position to get that insta-kill. So let's see now. Moment of truth coming up. Which we won't actually see unless you look at the minimap. And yep, he exploded right away, which means our supposition was correct. Lovely stuff there. I like it. Chris really starting to... Yep. Show his stuff. That first game wasn't very representative, I don't think. Now he's found his feet. We're starting to see some, yeah, pretty solid turns here. I fear if Nate loses this scout, it's pretty much over. I think so, yeah. And again, relying on the grenade launcher when he's got such a reliable um, a sniper rifle in his arsenal. Or indeed poisons to make use of. Just, just relying on just his weapon too to, much. He just needs to poison as many enemies as he can and hope that it's enough. But, no. And stop doing that move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. The first time it worked, but probably not a good idea. No, not when you've got so many other options to deal with. We just saw a little glimpse of uh, our little green sapper here jump, uh, like actually walking on the enemy's head. Could this reach the minefield again? No, it's there's no way. possible, but probably a bit too short. Yeah, no, no, there's no way. Nope, not quite. Closer than I thought, but no way. Already a little hot. Oh, there it is. Oh, There it is. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we you see, you see that mine there? The first one blasted the second mine into the air, which deal dealt more damage because <laughs> Nate's pig was also in the air. Yeah, I did. That was pretty insane. We were sort of saying to the guys, keep an eye on this map because there are some slightly odd tricks and turns. What we were talking about was that little random minefield, which does catch people out occasionally, and it did catch out Nate there. Yep. Uh... That, that minefield is just infamous now. For new players, it's just, uh, you just don't see it. And uh, we, we actually played it out like it was an, a, a little bit of a secret in, in voice chat with the guys. We, like, we were like, we are wondering about whether you will do something, but we won't tell you what. And that is what it was, the random, you know, walking on that minefield there. Yeah, I had a feeling it might happen at some point, and indeed it did. It's like the rite of passage of competitive hogs, walking on the mine on the railroad minefield. It does seem to be at the moment. Hard to see what Nate can really do here. It was a nice turn from um, Chris just now as well. Got a heal away and then came back and tranked the uh, medic once again. Oh, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't look like there's much to do for Nate. No, um, I mean, the still three kind of gunners just. Burst. The three gunners just can't do a lot compared to Chris's pigs. Uh, losing no. the medic control just was a huge uh, problem for him, too. And again, if he doesn't manage to at least poison a couple of enemies, there's pretty much no way to, to turn this around. And the only one he got, did manage to poison was just healed by the medic. Yeah, he's going to have to deal with that medic soon, but Chris is sensibly body blocking, so it's not really going to be possible anytime soon. It's just problems piling up for, for Nate. Right now. I very much ah. doubt it, but is the poison barrel going to be of use? Nope. And it is not. Nope. <laughs> it is just completely impossible to just hit the enemy and also hit the barrel in a way that it detonates when he is right in front of it. It's just impossible. Pretty much the only way is with a straight up jetpack, but even then, if you go the other Chris big away... Here comes Chris wrong. Yeah, let's see what he can do with a big old shrapnel. Nope, he shoved him away. 
How did that not... Okay. <laughs> the range on those barrels is absolutely pathetic. I wish it was broader because I would love to see those barrels be of use, but they just aren't. It's so stupid that I was even wondering, wait, is it gonna... If it actually hits, is it gonna show the 15? Or is it just gonna be the pig squealing and he's, now he's suddenly poisoned? Like, I don't even know how that works. It works the same as a poison shell from the artillery, so it doesn't do any damage, but you just hear them get poisoned, basically. But, no, didn't hear Wait, it, no, so no. it didn't the, the, I'm pretty sure the poison shell does do damage. Does it? I thought it just poisoned them. Maybe I'm misremembering. Uh, I think it does 15, too. Once again, for the third time, comments below. Anyone know more about hogs than we do? <laughs> let us know it's if not you like we play it all the time or anything. And I, I'll add a fourth one. Uh, comments. Let us know if you if you um, found Den this big here in an alley with all those weapons. What would you do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, those are the comments. If you're going to comment anything of the four requests, that's the one I most want to hear. Yes, what would you do absolutely. about Dirty Den in an alley with all these? Forget arsenal? the other ones. Just. Focus on this one. What, what would you do if you met Den in, an, in a dark alley? Oh, I'm trying to remember what voice Den has now because I could do an impression, but I can't remember. Isn't that the, the very... Uh, wait, that's not the right... Well, I was going to say raunchy, but that's not the right word. Uh, <laughs> I kind of know what you mean, but... Yeah. A raspy voice, yeah. It's like, you asked for this. That one? Yeah, that's the one. As I try and rack my brains thinking of other lines he's got there. Anyway, back to the game. <laughs> yeah, As yeah. you see Nate hobbling forward with a very, very poorly gunner. Yeah, yeah, just, I was just thinking, like, if you, if I actually met someone with that voice in a dark alley, I would be sh scared as shit. Oh, yeah, they don't even need to be armed with explosives of any kind. Yeah, just the voice. Up, you go, you asked for this, you just, <laughs> yeah, I'm out of it. Oh, God. We're having fun. We are indeed. As I'm pretty much, I'm pretty sure the guys are having to because they did sound like they were having fun in the breaks. Yeah, I think they're enjoying the fact that they're fairly evenly matched. Because uh, let's face it, it's not much fun, especially in grunts when you come up against someone who just absolutely demolishes you. But in this, where there's a game where it's kind of all to play for, it can be very enjoyable. So I'm glad that the guys are having fun, which is really the main aim of all this. Yeah, and the Swiss system is really good for that reason, where you might have like the first game, maybe the second one, where there's uh, a big difference in, in scale, but when you start, like, um, matching up people that have the same amount of wins and losses, you tend to see more, you know, more balanced matches, of course. Which would be very nice. Hopefully the system's gonna work wonders in that case, and we will see some more balanced games, because the yeah, balanced ones There's a the couple fun. of problems, like, organization-wise with it, but I really like it as a, as a tournament system. Okay, can Nate finally get a decent heavy weapons shot away? Okay, Nate, once again, ma doing magic tricks with the uh, damage ranges. Yeah, that was pretty much the longest range he could have gotten and still managed to get some double damage away, so not bad, not bad. Uh, let's see if... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, on 45 seconds, he absolutely has enough time to do this. I honestly kind of forgot we were playing on 45 seconds. Now, this would be interesting with his last trank. Will he body block again, or will he keep some distance so that he can start damaging that medic? I'm pretty sure he will body block again, which might result in a problem. Yeah, it looks like it. Still doing the right thing, but it's just one of those little additional things. If you can tranquilize with your last trank and keep some distance, you can then just start damaging the medic on your next turn. But now he risks hurting himself if he wants to. So, yeah, just one of those little tactical things that you pick up over time. Although, to be fair, it looks like the health difference is just not enough to even imagine a comeback for Nate. Yeah, but I think you're right. Everyone's body blocked too, so I don't know quite what Chris is going to go for here. Looks like he's going to try Mortar, which I very is much the, approve Is of. the Sky Blue Scout dead? I th think he is. I think so. Yeah, I remember him sure on low that. health, but I don't actually remember if he was killed or not. That was a 16 damage. And, uh, yeah, so, two low health pigs. I don't think Nate can do much, but he probably will gain control of the medic. I mean, there's no way he won't at this point. 
Yeah, that's very true. It's uh, it's hard to see how he's really going to turn it around, but you never know. With some strategic tranks, it could happen. The only way I could possibly think of turning this around would be if he were to kill the paratrooper and, like, uh, use a trank to prevent Chris from taking those weapons back. Oh, there's a sapper. We're oh, still 150 here, yeah. Yeah, this is basically done. Yay, more shrapnel action, and we're gonna see a big 50 here. Or even more. It's interesting to me that Chris seems like he definitely knows the shrapnel trick, but isn't really optimized with uh, with jetpacks. Yeah, <laughs> it's an interesting one. He's clearly watched a few games, so he knows about those sort of tricks, but yeah, just hasn't really put them into practice. Does fail to get the kill here. That's a bunch of green pigs, and not really the best choice for Nate here to stay close to a 7 health companion, like teammate. Ooh, and again, how did that not hit his own there? What is yeah, Nate doing with damage ranges? Some kind of sorcery, I presume, because, yeah, he keeps on managing to get away with it, which is nice. Okay, is Chris yeah, going to make just, use uh, of the... Oh, no. I just, uh... I'm just trying to think of a, of a way to, like, have an advice for Nate, because I don't think he played that bad. It's just... Um, sometimes just the positioning, and this is a thing that also Chris can improve. Positioning is key, just to avoid putting yourself too close to uh, your own pigs. And I think the lineups are really what uh, Nate can improve a lot on. Understanding of his arsenal as well, I think, with um, Nate, because he's clearly got the foundations there not too bad, but uh, needs to just be a little bit more familiar with heavy weapons power and the other options available to him and, you know, not rely on things it. like the grenade launch so much. Th think about it, like, from a logical perspective. They, these two guys both uh, acknowledge, acknowledge the fact that they're not amazing with heavy weapons. So what Chris did is limit... Uh, they're used to the minimum. Oh, there it is meanwhile, again! Meanwhile, the medic is just not having fun. So, like I was saying, meanwhile, Nate just went full gunners, which is, uh, you know, appreci we can appreciate that, but probably Railroad is not the correct map to do that. No, not the correct map, and you have to just have a little confidence with those heavy weapons to make good use of them. So yeah, like you say, Chris, just avoiding using them has it's clearly worked for him quite well. I mean, I think it, this is what decided the game, the lineups. Because, again, Nate didn't play that bad. Didn't play, or at least didn't play that, that worse than Chris. That's what I'm trying to say, really. Yeah, just it's a little chunky with the heavy weapons, and if he had like some more TNTs and things at his disposal, it could have been a bit more even. So yeah, I think you're right. But these are all valuable lessons to learn. There's a long tournament ahead of us, so yeah, if these guys can take away a few lessons, they could be pretty competitive in the future. Yeah, not quite long when you think about. It. Oh, the guy is in one health, by the way. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, he was on less than 23. I. Uh... Miscounted. Uh, I just was going to correct you on the fact that we don't have a long tournament ahead of us, really. <laughs> that's... Uh, I know, that's... Uh, that's not great, but... To be honest, it was really, really hard to figure out this tournament for me. So... Understandably guys, so, it was a bit of a strange one. The, the guys have basically three games to prove themselves. At least the new guys. Well, actually, everyone has... Three games to prove themselves, and just the difference it makes for the new guys is that they can start with 45 seconds, and as soon as they, if they, wow, stylish finish there, I like it. If they pass to the next game, which we're, they're gonna need two wins out of three for, they will uh, be at get a chance to play 30. But other than that, it's not a long tournament. The point is. Yeah, we're going to have a, a bet, better organization next year. But other than that, congratulations to Chris. Takes the game 2-1. Uh, it was very enjoyable for me. Uh, what do you say, KB? Yeah, same here. I think there was some good classic grunt action and a lot of potential from both players. But particularly Chris, I think, once he kind of 
got his head down a little and started to settle into the game, you could see that, yeah, there's some good fundamentals there. The guy, it could be one to watch out for, actually. But Nate put up a valiant effort, too. So, yeah, nice little first round, that. Good to see some good old classic grunt action. So, we will see them in the next game, which will be probably next week. And in the meantime, we'll see you guys in the next match. Tati bye-bye.